Combining the best of daily fantasy and survivor pools, Stat Hero is the next chapter in fantasy sports. No more competing with the Sharks or experts ever, because your only competition is Stat Hero itself. The face of DFS has changed. Finally, a game designed for the rest of us. Hey, what's going on? Jeff Rackliff here. Week 13 fantasy football is upon us, so it's time to dive into this week's waiver wire recommendations. And hey, in most leagues, we're likely only one week out from the fantasy football playoffs. So now is more important than ever to make sure your rosters are tweaked and fully formed here for the fantasy playoffs. That means take a long look at your bench. If there are guys that you just simply will never use, low upside guys who aren't going to start for your team, it's time to cut those guys loose. The Larry Fitzgeralds of the world. Hey, he's a Hall of Famer, future Hall of Famer, and certainly a fantasy football Hall of Famer. But at this point in his career, at this point in the season, he's not going to start for you. So load up on those high ceiling guys at running back and wide receiver as we head into the fantasy football playoffs. Of course, we get you set up here with the PFF recommendations. So let's start a quarterback this week. And hey, Ryan Tannehill has been a big surprise for the Tennessee Titans, of course, heading into the season. Marcus Mariota was the starter, but Tannehill took over, and since week five, he's been a top 12 fantasy quarterback, and of course last week, only one quarterback scored more fantasy points than him, and his name is Lamar Jackson. So this speaks really well for Ryan Tannehill down the stretch. Stranger things have happened than having to rely on Ryan Tannehill for fantasy football purposes. If you need some help at the quarterback position, Tannehill just might be your guy. Moving over to running back, this is a fascinating week at running back. And there's a guy who I've been recommending on the cheap for several weeks who actually leads the pack this week. His name, Rashad Penny. Chris Carson this past week against the Philadelphia Eagles had multiple fumbles, and essentially that opened the door for Rashad Penny, and he came rushing through. Of course, he had the long touchdown. Goes for 129 rushing yards against the Philadelphia Eagles. And now we are hearing that He's going to see more touches. Now, is he going to be the lead back? I doubt it. I still think Carson's going to be the lead back, but it's more of a committee situation than before. And if Carson keeps fumbling, there's more opportunity there for Penny. And hey, if Carson got hurt, Penny would be an instant top 15 fantasy running back. So if he's out there on waivers this week, you're looking at him for sure as the top out of the week at the position. Wide receiver is interesting because, hey, there are some leagues where guys like Will Fuller or Marquise Brown or even Devontae Parker are out there, but they may not be out there in your league. Those guys are obviously must-ads this week, but if they aren't out there, a player who I'm looking at, well, let's go off the Ryan Tannehill uh, recommendation from earlier in the video, A.J. Brown. How about the rookie? Another long touchdown for him. He has four receptions this season of 40-plus yards. That's tied for seventh in the league, so he has massive upside. He's not the top target in that offense, but that's fine. It's the upside that you're looking for. And a lot of times we do see this. Fantasy football playoffs can be won by younger players on your roster. Of course, you're not going to get much younger than A.J. Brown as a rookie in the league. So I love grabbing him for his upside down the stretch here. All right, finally, we'll go to tight end. And Eric Ebron landed on injured reserve. So that opens the door for Jack Doyle to essentially be the guy now for Indianapolis. Mo Ali Cox is there, but we're not going to see the target distribution like we saw with Doyle and Ebron, where they were really cannibalizing off of each other. In fact, if you add their targets together, Eric Ebron and Jack Doyle on the season, that combination would be the second most targets for any tight end if they were one person. Now, I don't think, again, that we're going to have a massive ceiling with Jack Doyle, but it's a floor play here at a position that is so challenging this season. We should see some decent volume for Jack Doyle, especially when we get down in the red zone there. So you could be looking at him as a top 12 or better option going forward. And most weeks, you simply can't find that at tight end. Jack Doyle now, because of the opportunity with Eric Ebron on injured reserve, the top ad of the week at the position. But hey, he may already be owned in your league. Maybe some of these other guys are already owned in your league as well. Well, don't worry. Every Tuesday, we come out with my waiver wire recommendations. This week, well over 40 recommendations, including five defenses that you can stream this week. If you're hard up at the, the defense position, this is a great week for streamers. Five of them for you, but I'm not going to tell you on this video who they are. You got to go and check it out. Of course, you can check out a whole bunch of other things at PFF, uh, including fantasy rankings and projections. 
all of the best football data in the industry, of course, our unique grades, all of that and more you can get over at pff.com. Thanks for watching the PFF YouTube channel. And if you want to subscribe, all you have to do is push the button. Don't forget everything you get. A little fantasy, push the button. A little green line for the gambling aspects of the game, push the button. College football, push the button. The YouTube channel from PFF.